Sorry we're late. We were busy negotiating the purchase of a major crypto exchange and we were looking at their financials. So we're very sorry. Um, Paloma, you know, being very aggressive as we are, we didn't want to let Binance take everything over. So we've been really working hard on due diligence. <laughs> so, um, coo, 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 coo. <laughs> so welcome everyone. Uh, today, <laughs> today is <laughs> today is a very cuckoo, cuckoo day, right? Like really cuckoo, right? Cuckoo as in crazy. Uh, <laughs> it's a crazy week, um, and uh, we 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 are we're here. So first of all, it's uh, Wednesday, November 9th. Uh, thanks to all. Thanks to everybody in the Paloma community. Thanks to all the pigeons, all the, the validators, all the test nets, all the devs, everybody, the team. My goodness. Um, the Paloma family is amazing. Um, and it is an unincentivized family. Nobody is getting paid to pretend that they care about Paloma. <laughs> um, and we think that's really important <laughs> because what we really want is uh, we may be a slow growing community. We may not be you know, um, overwhelmed with folks, but what we really want to be is genuine, sincere and genuine and authentic and true. And so um, welcome everyone. Hey, Vera, how's it going? Cool, cool, cool. Ooh, cool. all right. Yeah, yeah. Are, are, are you looking to buy an exchange? Are you in the market? You're, you're <laughs> buying an exchange. Um, um, you know, so, so yes. Um, so, where are we? Um, today is, is November 9th, and this is the second week. We're going on week two after our upgrade from Dragonberry on Paloma to, um, to our latest version 0510. But before we go forward, uh, just a little bit of heads up if you're listening to the video or if you're reading the transcript. Um, hello, welcome back. Um, we are going to be winding down the Paloma AMAs. Um, and uh, these Paloma AMAs we've had fun doing because we like to keep, keep folks posted on the progress of the project, but um, due to the regulatory changes or the court case against library, LBRY, that token, um, we now are unable to run AMAs about the project. Would you believe that? So we are, um, if we don't want the grains to be considered um, a blatant security and that the only reason why you're here on this <laughs> AMA is for us to pump the value of grains, um, we will have to end these AMAs. Um, and so the AMAs will come to an end at the end of this month, uh, the month of November. Um, and starting December, we will not be doing the Paloma AMAs. Um, also, uh, we will not be doing updates on engineering um, daily. We will not be posting daily updates on engineering. However, we will be posting releases. If there's a new release in the code, we will let folks know that a new release has dropped and we will in the new release um, put together a blog post or wings post outlining um, the features that have been added or the changes. This makes it more difficult to tell where the project is going because um, you know project awareness is what really makes uh, folks not only in incentivized quote unquote to contribute and help with the project um, but it also makes them incentivized to um, stay with the project. So. We understand that um, you know it comes with a cost. However, um, uh, we don't want to be accused of trying to pump the price of grains by uh, providing software updates and weekly updates on on where how the software is going uh, and happening. Now we are still pre mainnet, so for now, since grains are no are no value, it's not that bad because there's no such thing as grains um, that is investable. There are no investable tokens in grains. There are no grains tokens to invest in. So in this moment, this is not relevant. However, once we go mainnet, um, and we can't say when mainnet is, get it? We can't tell anybody anything. Um, because we, we, we know mainnet should happen soon, we might want to stop the AMA soon. So if you're listening and reading, there is no mainnet. Mainnet is not coming, we can't tell you but we're going to stop the AMAs at the end of November. So there you go. <laughs> cool, cool. <laughs> All right. So what, why don't we jump into um, what is happening with Paloma? All right, cool. So um, where we are um, today with Paloma um, is that we are working on performance fixes. Last 
So we had um, really some great help from um, Bez, um, Alexander uh, Bez Bichuk, who is one of the um, head devs over at Osmosis and one of the former lead devs on, on Tenement. He is now part of our team. And we brought him on to help us get Paloma ready for mainnet because we have no idea when mainnet's going to launch, right? So because <laughs> we, we did that, um, we instituted a number of upgrades. So um, Paloma was running fine. We were sending messages. Awesome, awesome. But Dragonberry, um, which came out of the Binance hack, remember that $500 million that Binance launched, lost due to the um, ICS hack, which is the inner blockchain protocol hack, uh, that required a, a hotfix upgrade. So we upgraded Paloma as, uh, based on the Cosmos SDK to that version. And um, when we upgraded that, um, then we redeployed a new testnet. So what we wanted to do, because again, we have no idea when mainnet is coming, what we wanted to do was test a new network um, and test full end-to-end -end deployment. So, you know, you can do integration testing, uh, you know, on days on end, but then you want to really take the, you know, take your pigeon out and really see if it can fly. And so we did that. Um, and a week ago we did that and we had partial success <clears throat> and, some, and, and, and a, a non-partial complete surprise. The complete surprise was that our Ethereum contract did not deploy to Ethereum mainnet. Um, and our Binance contract deployed to mainnet. It was the most surreal thing. Why would one contract deploy and the other contract not deploy? Um, so, that was strange. Um, another issue was that the um, the valid set updates were not updating on the Binance marketing contract. Well, the deployment was successful, it was not. Uh, so we spent some time looking at logs and trying to debug errors. Um, and uh, long and short of it is, is that uh, we're still debugging, we're still collecting logs. We've been going through log entries line by line um, and checking prior issues. Uh, and what we have found out is that our relayer module, Pigeon, most likely is our troublesome bird, right? And um, this troublesome bird is uh, communicating with the Paloma Cosmos SDK, and it's not communicating as well. The chirp chirps are not coming through. And so we are refactoring Pigeon. Um, but to refactor Pigeon, we, what we want to do is, you know, sort of take a full architecture review of Pigeon understand um, all our pieces, because it should work, right? It was working before, and determine what may have changed in the Cosmos SDK to impact Pigeon. And this is the beauty <clears throat> of the Cosmos SDK, right? You're depending upon a piece of software which has been developed by other devs, and they're doing a great job. And when they make a change, um, if you're not careful, or, or your modules that depend on this, so Go has a series of dependencies, so just so you know, when we compile, when you compile, um, when we compile, for example, you download that tar um, from our GitHub, that tar has been compiled, right, based on real-time retrieval of the code from um, other, you know, from the Cosmos SDK main GitHub project. So we'll, you know, if we say, you know, so now go some, we'll say, hey, go pick, you know, Cosmos SDK 4.5.10, please. Here's the GitHub URL. It literally, when it compiles, it goes, pulls that code in and compiles it every time. This is the beauty of Go. Um, and that's why when it's violent, but as a program, it's great. Um, so that's a, another great feature of, of Rust and Crates. So we pull down the code and compile. Now, if the source code from the main, when the dependency code has changed, and we are impacted by the dependency, then our, our code breaks, right? So suddenly now, what was working before is broken. And then you're like, well, why did it break? Oh, we don't know. We got to go in and check. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, cool. So we now, birds, have to go back into Pigeon, walk through our code, and see where it breaks. And it's amazing. We have logs. Like, one of the beautiful things about Mattia's work on Pigeon is there we log everything. Like, well, I mean, I don't know if, you're, if you've seen the relayer.go file. Every line, we're logging. Log, log, log. Um, but no, no. yes. Yeah. Staring at my logs right now, and my screen is just it's, yeah. filling up. It's log <laughs> party. It's log central. We're logging everything. <laughs> it's a crazy time to log. So we log it. Um, but those, what those logs are telling us is that um, one, and also we'll talk about some of these errors right now. Um, the first error 
um, that we see is that um, when, although the um, validators are being collected, so it collects the signatures, you know, Pigeon collects the signatures, Pigeon verifies everybody has Ethereum or BNB in their wallets, and Pigeon now has to sign a message and broadcast that message via Paloma, it's failing. It's complaining. It's saying, hey, um, I tried to send that message, but I had an account sequence mismatch. And an account sequence mismatch is that says that your node is out of sync with the main node for that block, or the proposer node, right? So imagine a best, and by the way, I have become really good at account secret mismatch problems and, and defining them. So we're, everybody in this team is getting really smart at, at Cosmos. Um, but you know, we've seen account secret mismatches before, usually when you have overloaded networks, right? Everything's going very fast because, you know, again, the software can only perform as fast as it can. But when our network's not overloaded, it's not a test net. But somehow the pigeon node is out of sync with the proposer node, the, the node or the validator that's proposing the new block, that's building the new block. We're saying, hey, we want to send a message into that block to broadcast our message to Ethereum or Binance or any smart chain. And then the, it's getting rejected because they'd be like, bro, bro, you want to go into block you know, 27, but we're on block 28, bro. Bro, where you been, bro? Like, you're late, bro, bro, a, a consequence mismatch, bro. Bro, check yourself before you wreck yourself. And so um, everyone who is doing this proposal, so something is happening where a pigeon is out of sync or the node, the pigeon is making a proposal for a node state that is no longer in sync with the proposer node. And so we're currently debugging why that is, uh, which means we're going top down into pigeon um, which is in our GitHub, and we're documenting and saying, hey, here's where this is happening. So it's taking us some time um, because this is, a, you know, this is a bird, and, you know, doing, you know, surgery on a bird requires very delicate. Uh, <laughs> who am I fooling? Uh, no, it's just taking us some time because this is a new issue that we didn't have before. So we know it's related to how Cosmos, the Cosmos upgrade, and what we have is a, is a typical dependency break. Um, now we have to find out why that dependency break is happening and how we can upgrade Pigeon to address that dependency break. Now, what's exciting about this is this means that we will now have a practice in the organization that as Cosmos SDK continues to release new versions, Pigeon will be ready for changes and for possible breakage, right? So what we're doing here is we're hardening Pigeon and future versions of Pigeon against future versions of Cosmos SDK, which will make Paloma more competitive, right, against other chains in the similar space. Um, and if we're able to accomplish that, you can realize that Paloma and Pigeon can start using more advanced features of Cosmos SDK releases as they come on without fear of breakage. Um, we did consider um, downgrading to Cosmos SDK v459, but that has the exploit from, you know, from the Binance hack. And although that we could patch it, we're like, listen, that's just a patch of a patch. The real problem is we need to build in a practice where Pigeon releases are essentially tracking Cosmos SDK releases and being hardened against those Cosmos SDK releases so that the entire community can take advantage of the best of the Cosmos SDK without fear that Pigeon will break. Pigeon is our, we are proud of Pigeon. It's our most awesome software. Um, and again, we, you know, we, we, this cross-chain communication marketplace is exploding. So we are saddened that we can't be deploying to more chains and doing more exciting work because we have to take some time to fix this. Um, and, 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 and so we are, it's, it is slow going. But I think what we'd like to say is that um, uh, we, this, this work will harden Pigeon against future Cosmos SDK upgrades. And so a hardened bird is a bird that is a rugged bird and then a bird that will keep on flying no matter what new software. And we want to do really aggressive things. Like we want to use the best. I mean, just to be clear, we should be on Cosmos SDK 04610 or 0461 period. What was it? 0461? 
Um, I think it was 0461. 0461. Yeah. Yeah, we were going to be on 0461 because that has transaction prioritization. And you may ask the chart, why does Paloma need transaction, you know, transaction prioritization? What does a bird need to be able to prioritize transactions in the pool? And we want to say, well, Paloma messages, remember, we used to call this FedEx chain, right? And we used to call it FedEx chain for a reason. It means that messages get delivered on time. And with transaction prioritization in SDK 4.6, what we get to do is to be able to say, hey, we can handle messages, messages that have to go um, via RPC network to the target chains. Those messages get transaction priority over a non cross chain message, right? So we continue to tune and optimize Paloma to be the real cross chain bird of choice, right? I'm not gonna tell you what target chain, you know, this would be useful for, but um, I hear that, uh, you know, <laughs> I hear something like the sun, right? Um, because we can't talk about what's coming on Paloma because that would be, you know, regulatorily bad in America. But we can say that, you know, in order to transaction prioritization is for us to handle messages on faster, faster chains, right? And if Paloma is on a deployed chain that is doing thousands of transactions per second um, or thousands of blocks or very, very fast, um, being able to take advantage of transaction prioritization in the SDK 4.6, is something we need. However, we can't afford to have pigeon to break when we go to 4.6, we must be hardened. So we're hardening the bird right now. Um, and I think we're gonna be proud. What we're gonna do, I, I think what we would like to do is document how pigeon works and share that with the community so folks can get an idea of how the module is built and what the features are. It's open source, anybody can look at the software today, but we're gonna document it as part of this process because um, we, as we continue to upgrade faster into higher versions of Cosmos SDK, um, we're gonna be able to very, very quickly determine which pieces um, may have dependency issues when the upgrades occur. There's lots of other things happening on Paloma. Do we, are we, we, okay, we can't talk about that, that, that other stuff because it's not public, right? The, the stuff that begins with the W. Vera? I'm a silent bird. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think I can, can we talk about the W thing? Is it public? Is it? Um, I guess it's public. It is public. Okay. Do you say wallet? Uh, I, I, did I, I did not say wallet. What are you talking about? There's no such thing as a Paloma wallet. Or is there? <laughs> um, Vera, tell us more about this Paloma wallet. How can we get it? Is it like what do we have to buy it like where is it um we do, you don't have to buy it it's in it's in the chrome store um, it's in the chrome store you mean there's a wallet in the chrome store for paloma there is a wallet in the oh chrome my store god paloma. this is insane insane uh, this is uh, ridiculous how, what do we have a, how do we get to this wallet I, I don't even have I don't even have this wallet. Like, where the Chrome store? Do I just go to Chrome store and go for Paloma? I'm going there now. I'm going to the Chrome store. Uh, yeah, you should be able to find. Okay, it. hold on. Let's I do this in real time. Chrome store. Let's go to the Chrome web store and let's search the web store for Paloma. Oh, yeah. Oh my God, Paloma Nest Beta. All right, at your boy. Cool, 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 cool. Cool. Oh, cool. 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 <laughs> I do apologize to our listeners, but my God, there is a fucking wallet. I can't curse. Oh my God. Okay. okay. Um, there is a Paloma Nest wallet in the Chrome store. So uh, go to the Chrome store and um, why don't you go get, the, get yourself one of them uh, nice fine eggs um in that wallet look at that it's version 1.0.0 that means it has bugs <laughs> yes i should uh, this disclaimer that we actually need working through some, some it has <laughs> bugs some known issues right now so um you know but this is amazing it's there yeah but... i'm gonna add it to chrome uh, it can read and change all your data on websites and replace the page. Oh my God, this is a vicious extension. Oh, it, it, it does evil. Okay, I'll add the extension anyway. 
um, and turn on sync. Okay, I don't want to, yeah, no, no, no. no, thank you, Google. So there it is. I have an egg pinned to my Google Chrome bar. It's a little pink egg that looks very cute. Oh, I get to create a new wallet. Oh, look at that. Oh, wallet name. Uh, cool, cool. <laughs> so we're going to go. Oh, I get to select a Nest wallet icon, Blue Nest, Green Nest. I'm going to go for Yellow Nest. Okay. And the password is cool. And my password is cool. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, great. I got a mnemonic. I hit submit. Oh, fuck. I didn't write down the mnemonic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is so wild. Okay, hold on a second, people. Okay, I can just say I haven't written down the mnemonic. <laughs> oh, hey, oh, yeah, I can do that, right? The fourth word is, whoa, dude. Oh, my goodness. Submit. <gasps> oh, my goodness. I have a Paloma wallet. Um, it's taking up an entire page, which is very funny, um, which is very cute. And I have no grains. But I have an address, which I can copy. How do I copy my address? Oh, just hit copy. It says copy. And now I go to the Discord, and I'm going to go to the faucet. Let's go to the faucet. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Okay, how do I do it? How do I? String request. Paloma. My, I paste the address. Paloma testnet 13. Request. <laughs> I got grains, people. I got grains. Wait, wait, hold on. Where's my, I just refreshed. It asked me to create a new wallet name. What, what happened to my old wallet? Oh, fuck. What's going on? My wallet. Wait, hold on. Oh, it's here. It's here. I have 10 grains. I have 10 grains. Um, so Congratulations. Thank you so very much. It is good to, you know, uh, my precious grains. If I, don't, if, I, if I let you guys get your hands on my goddamn grains, I can't feed my eggs. Anyway, um, congratulations uh, to Vera. Um, and the uh, UI team, uh, Joyce, and to Jack. Uh, the Nest is live, and I have 10 grains. I was able to test it end-to-end -end and get my grains. And I was able to save my mnemonic, which is great, so I can always come back and get going on my wallet. Can I send grains in this version, or that's coming in the next version? That's coming in the next version. Okay. So um, congratulations, Paloma. You now have a wallet. And it's not because you're going mainnet. Mainnet is not coming, and there's nothing we can say about mainnet. But it is very good to say that we now have a wallet that anyone can use uh, to hold their grains um, than, and, of course, now have, a, have an address that they can use both on any testnet and any mainnet. All right. That was just amazing. Thank you, Vera. And, I, you know, they say never do a demo in real time, but... We did the demo, um, and it worked in real time, and it's in production, so it's live. So uh, get your get your nest set up. We have to tell everybody. Vera, am I missing anything else? Anything else we got to announce today? No, I think we covered it. We think we covered it. <laughs> All right, we did. Uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for this. Uh, we covered it well, and uh, we are super excited. Um, to stop making AMAs so that uh, we won't go to jail. Um, but uh, we're also excited the progress of the project and also um, our continued excellence in the area of relayer software development in the Cosmos ecosystem. Please continue to check us out on Discord. Um, check us out on Twitter. And uh, please comment, tell us stuff, give us advice, thoughts. We welcome it. It's a community effort. And we look forward to keeping you posted. Oh, sorry, we can't update you. But um, when there's new updates on the code, we will announce new releases. With that, we cool the music and wish you best of luck in the coming crash and bear market of 2022. <laughs>